Hello everybody, welcome to Euro Channel. My name is Stefan Buntrock. I'm a urologist and sexologist. Recently, one of my patients asked me whether women also had a prostate. Strictly speaking, they don't. At least not in the sense we are talking about the prostate in men. But actually, the female prostate exists and female ejaculation is possible. You might be familiar with the term squirting. Now it gets interesting, so bear with me for a couple of seconds. The prostate and seminal vesicles are responsible for the production of the seminal fluid. No, it's not the testicles. They only contribute with a little drop which contains the sperm cells. So basically everything that shoots out with orgasm has its origin in the prostate and seminal vesicles. So if there is such a thing as a female prostate, what's it going to do at orgasm? Well, basically the same as in men. Ejaculate, also known as squirting. But not every woman is able to do that. This video will shed some light on this phenomenon. If you watch your channel on a regular basis, you'll become a hero in your neighborhood because you will accumulate a wealth of knowledge everybody wants to know but nobody dares to ask. So subscribe, hit Euro like and activate the bell and never miss out again on any new videos. I already have a really, really hot topic in the pipeline that you don't want to miss. As soon as the algorithm becomes my friend again, I will release it. So let's start with embryology. Because in the beginning, all embryos are created equal. There is no male and female. There is potential for development into any gender. It's basically a bunch of cells, simplified speaking. But sometime during our fetal life, genetics take over and mold the tissues into a male or a female body. But as I said, it's all there. And some of it still is in adult life, to some extent. There are four critical structures in fetal sex differentiation. How they work together is not easy to understand, so I spare you the details and name only one of them. The urogenital sinus, the UGS. For sex differentiation, you need testosterone. If you are interested to know where the testosterone comes from, watch this video. When the prostate starts to form, the embryo is only 5 cm long and it develops out of the UGS. Female embryos have the urogenital sinus too, but in females, the UGS develops, among others, into what is called the skinny's glands. I think you get the point. Prostate, skinny's glands. So what are they? Actually, we know quite little about them, despite the fact that they have been discovered as early as in 1672 by Renier de Graaf. And that was long before Alexander Skene described them in 1880. There is lots of controversy going on about them when it comes to sexual function, ejaculatory capabilities, and even about their anatomy. In anatomical studies, they were found in about two-thirds of the women examined and they were adjunct to the first two-thirds of the urethra and were quite individual in size. Now it gets interesting. Under the microscope, they resemble prosthetic tissue before puberty. And there is even more. It has been shown that they contain PSA, the prostate-specific antigen, and prosthetic acid phosphatase. These glands then open either into the outer part of the urethra or to the left and right of the urethral opening, or even both. In 1950, Ernst Grafenberg, born in Adelepsen, by the way, which is very close to Göttingen, where I have my office, described a very sensitive area a few centimeters up the anterior vaginal wall. With stimulation, this area produced orgasms in women which were different from clitoral orgasms. If you think this is boring, wake up, because I am talking about the G-spot. G from Grafenberg. As it so happens, the G-spot is exactly in the anatomical area of the skinny's glands. It all makes sense, doesn't it? Skinny's glands, the prostate, the G-spot, prosthetic orgasms, you read about it all over the internet. But does the G-spot really exist? The concept of the G-spot is widely accepted among women, but sound scientific evidence is lacking. At least there is an old study from the 90s. 2,350 women were asked about the G-spot 
84% stated that they own a highly sensitive area in the vagina. Overall, 40% reported ejaculation at the moment of orgasm, but of those who said they had a G-spot, 82% reported ejaculation with orgasm. A very small study took a closer look at the composition of the squirted fluids. Seven women volunteered for this. In five of the seven samples, PSA was detected. However, involuntary loss of urine made up a large proportion of the ejaculate. So the quest for the G-spot will continue and the role of Skinny's glands will have to be defined more precisely. Obviously, they are not present in one-third of the women, what might explain the widespread spectrum of the female orgasmic experience. Why they develop in so many is unknown. Strictly speaking, they don't seem to be necessary, but this is an area that still has to be explored. But in my opinion, there is sufficient proof for the female prostate, even if it is a little different from the male one. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.